Hi everybody, I'm Dave Thomas and today I'm building the Quest Astra 3 model rocket kit. This kit comes completely pre-colored and pre-finished and so we can get this from the workbench to the launch pad in just an hour or two. So like with any of these models we want to make sure that we have all the parts. Alright, so just go ahead and open up the instructions there. And we've got a parts list here on the front. So first of all we have a parachute and shroud lines with some little stick-on buttons here. So we do have to assemble the parachute ourselves. Alright, we've got a set of self-adhesive decals. The shock cord for these Quest kits um, is actually in two pieces. There's a, a piece of Kevlar and then a piece of elastic. We've got both of those. Alright, nose cone, pre-colored body tube, motor mount tube. Alright, the fin can comes in two pieces here. And we have four fins. All right, a locking ring and then the engine retainer itself. All right, so we'll just check through here and we have all of the parts. And so I'm going to clear this away and we will get started. So the first thing to do is to tie the two shock cords together. And so we're just going to make these even here on the ends and then tie an overhand knot like that and you're going to want a little bit of material here on the free end so that that knot does not so that the knot does not come loose and then as a little extra precaution here I'm going to put just a little dot of glue on that knot and for this you'll want to use either wood glue or white glue. Don't use plastic cement and don't use super glue because those can deteriorate the elastic part of this. Okay, so just a little tiny dab there and just work that around the knot and this will just help keep it in place. Looks like I need just a little more there. Okay. After you have the shock cords tied together, then take the free end of the Kevlar, the yellow cord, and pass that through this little loop that's in the front end of one half of the fin can. And you're going to tie a double knot there to lock that in place. Okay. Now try and keep that as short as possible, but not so short that it pulls back through the knot. And here again, we can give it a little extra safety measure. Uh, you can take just a little dot of super glue and apply that to the knot. And just let that dry. Um, and while we're doing that, we can still be working on the rest. So here we're going to take the motor mount tube and the forward end of the motor mount tube has two slots cut into it and these match up with this rectangular peg that's on either side of the fin can. So we're just going to put the first one on there like that. All right, and now I haven't glued anything yet, I just want to test fit this to make sure everything's going to go together. So that goes in the other slot of the tube, and then we've got pegs on either side of the fin can that go together, and it should look like that. Okay, so as long as everything fits, go ahead and open that back up. And here they show using a, a tube type of plastic cement, like this one, um, and that works, but I found to get better control if we use a brush-on type cement like this. Okay, so here, 
we're going to put this along the edges but not in the recessed areas where the fin's going to go. So these little notches that you see here, we don't want glue in there. Right, but we do want it on the upper edges. Right here and right here. Okay, and get all the pegs. Now if you do happen to slop a little bit of this over onto the outside of the fin can, if you just let it evaporate, it will hide itself. If you try and wipe it, it's going to make a mess. Now the, the drawback to this brush on cement is it does dry quickly. So when you get to the end of this, you may need to recoat a little bit. Okay, and then just simply put the two halves back together. And give it a squeeze and hold this for about 30 to 60 seconds while the glue is drying. Now with the two halves glued together here as we look down from the front end those two pegs that went through the motor mount tube act as the engine block. So you'll notice there's no thrust ring or engine block in this kit and it's because it's built in here. Alright so next we're going to put this into the body tube. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different. They're just threading this through the body tube to begin with. And what I'm going to do is instead take the shock cord and temporarily thread it back through the motor mount here so that it's coming out the other side. And the reason for this is I'm going to be less likely to glue the shock cord into the body tube this way. Okay, so for this step um, they recommend the tube type cement like this, which is good. Uh, an alternative is to use a gel type super glue. <clears throat> and the reason I say that is because we have two dissimilar surfaces here. We're gluing plastic onto cardboard. And so um, the idea with the tube type cement is it's going to melt the plastic enough, theoretically, and infuse it into the cardboard and make it bond that way. That doesn't always work, <clears throat> but definitely um, don't use the brush on plastic cement and don't use the thin type of super glue because these will just absorb into the cardboard without making a bond to the fin can. So I'm going to go ahead and use some gel type super glue. If you're using the plastic model cement, you're going to do it in the exact same way. So just run a bead of whichever glue you have right along the inside edge and then take your fin can now put that in, kind of wiggle it back and forth a little bit to let it seat and then again go ahead and hold this in place for about 60 seconds and then we can set it down our next task will be to apply the fins to the fin can, but for this we want to make sure the fin can glue is completely dry because as we insert those fins that's going to put a little bit of stress on the joints that we just glued and that could pop it open. So at this point I'm going to wait at least 15 minutes before doing the fins. In the meantime though, we can go ahead and assemble the parachute. So for this, uh, initially we're going to take the sheet itself here and unfold it. This is actually a really big parachute for this rocket. Okay, and here you're going to want either a pair of scissors or your hobby knife. So I'm going to use the scissors route. And the first thing we're going to do is cut this out along the dotted line. We can go ahead and assemble the parachute. So for this, initially we're going to take the sheet itself here and unfold it. Scissors route. 
Now the first thing we're going to do Okay, so then coming back here on our parachute instructions all right, well After we get it cut out, we're going to apply these little grippers and These are just little self-adhesive squares and So here we're going to just peel these off Remove the center and just discard it and then this will go into each of these white areas at the parachute corners. So now we can get the scissors wrapped. The first thing we're going to do is cut this out along the dotted line. And you want... All right. And now, once we've got those in place, take a pencil and poke the plastic through on each one. And then take the shroud line material here, carefully untangle it, All right, now this is already pre-cut into three lines, okay, and so then once you've got it untangled there, just separate each of those lines from its mates. Okay, and then we're going to tie each one across a side. So here's our instructions again. So each of these lines is going to form a loop and then we'll go to the adjacent two holes and put in the next one. Okay, so here I'm going to start with this hole. Might need to wet the end there a little bit. Right, you pass that through, and then you're going to tie two half hitches or a double knot onto this. And here, if you have really small fingers, you can get smaller loops and knots. The main thing here is try and be as consistent as possible so that all of your shroud lines come out the same length. Alright, now we'll tie the other end to an adjacent corner. Do the same thing. Okay, so that's what one side's going to look like, and then we're just going to do the same thing for the other two shroud lines. Now we've got all three loops of shroud line in place. And I'm just going to gather these all around one finger here. And now I'm going to grasp the parachute in the middle 
and then pull on these loops and if we did this right all of the corners here are going to be meeting at about the same spot and they do there's you know, they're a little bit off from each other but not a lot to worry about if you have one that's really off you can always go back and retie it um, but if you can get away with it don't now there are two ways to put the parachute on okay one is to take the nose cone here draw our loops of shock cord together and then just push those through which may be easier said than done okay and then just pull enough through and then you can take the whole nose cone pass it through the loops and then pull it taut All right, now I'm not going to do mine that way so I'm going to take this back off and if you've seen any of my other videos you'll know I really like to use snap swivels so for this I'm going to reestablish the length of my lines here so just grab it in the center of the parachute once more pull those lines taut make sure they're all even and I'm going to grab them back here so in my hand I'm using my other fingers to keep that from moving relative to each other and I'm going to pinch that down into a very small loop and I'm going to pass that through the swivel side of the snap swivel okay not through the snap itself but through the other end alright and open that up a little bit like that and then pass the entire snap swivel through those loops okay and then take the loops there bring them down and then pull those taut against the snap swivels and now it looks like this I'm going to recheck my lines okay looks good there um, once you've got that where you want it you can go ahead and take a little dab of wood glue or white glue and put that on the knot so it doesn't come unraveled later on you don't need a lot just a little dab there and work that into the knot Okay, and now, if I ever need to change the parachute, or, or maybe even exchange it for a streamer or for a smaller parachute, I can just snap this in when I'm ready, like that. And uh, if some rocketeers like to store their parachutes separate from the rocket, so when you're ready to put this in storage, you can just unclip it like that. The other thing this does is it helps prevent too much torsional stress. So unless you're, you got this thing perfectly balanced, it's going to spin a little bit as it's coming down. All right? And the more it spins, it starts to wind up the shroud lines like this. And if that happens too much, it'll collapse the parachute and it won't be as effective. With the, the swivel in place, that swivel allows it to turn upon itself without tightening up the shroud line so much. Okay, so that also gives us an added benefit that way. Alright, so I'm going to set this stuff aside and we should be able to get back to the fins. My fin can should be dry by now and so the first thing I'm going to do is simply put the shock cord back through the body tube so it gets where it belongs. Just feed that through and then pull it once you can reach it. Okay, and then check down inside, make sure you're not hung up on the engine block or something. So it should look like this coming out the outside there. Alright, now for the fins, they're going to snap into these slots, and we want to dry fit everything first. Okay, so that's going to go in like this and then push forward. These are really, really tight. All right, and this could pose a problem now when we go to glue these. Because if they're that tight, the glue can grab and it'll lock the fin in place before it's got all the way up into its uh, proper position. So what we can do here is I'm going to take an emery board I'm just going to 
give a little bit of filing in here. All right, in those slots where the fins are going to go. Okay, and then check it again. All right, that's still really tight, but that's also going to tell me something of how I want to glue this. So in the instructions, they're taking the tube type cement, applying it to the fin, and then putting it up into the fin can. Okay. Now just you can do that, but just be aware that this tightness can sometimes work against you. The alternative then is to use the brush on type glue. Okay, so you're going to put a fin in, all right, push it into place, and now using the brush on stuff, we're just going to run this right along the edge like this and the glue will flow down into the crack by capillary action. And that will help glue that in place. Now we'll also see here in just a moment there's a that fin retaining ring that's going to go just behind the fins and that will also help keep the fins in place technically you could do this without any glue on the fins and just rely on the fin retainer okay. I'm going to continue this with the other uh, three fins off camera and then I'll come back now that the glue on my fins is dry, we can do the final assembly here. So I'm going to take the elastic part of the shock cord here and tie it to the nose cone. Just tie a double knot here. stretch that from all possible directions and then if this free end is long enough that it can get up here on the shoulder go ahead and cut that back but not all the way to the knot uh, like I've done with the other knots on this um, you can use a small amount of white glue or wood glue to just help lock that knot in place It doesn't take much. Just work that into the knot there. Okay, and then we can attach the parachute if you haven't done so already. So I'm just going to clip this in here. Okay. Um, one other thing we need to do is attach the fin retaining ring here and this is going to this is a, a twist mount so first we just want to make sure it's going to work so we have to line up all the proper tabs there and then this just twists okay and then the motor retainer here also twists into place on the back so now it's going to look like this. All right, now we can put the whole thing together. Um, if you're actually prepping this for launch, uh, put in three to four pieces of um, recovery wadding there. On the parachute, fold this into a triangle like this. And then take your shroud lines, find a loop about in the middle, and just loop that up onto the parachute. And then I'm going to fold the sides over to enclose the shroud lines. All right, and I'm going to fold that over once and then fold it lengthwise into something resembling a cylinder. And then go ahead and tuck down the shock cords. They're kind of stiff and they want to come pop right back out of there again. 
Okay, and so that would go in there. And then the parachute goes in after. And that should go in fairly easily. If it's binding on something, pull it back out and find out what's going on. All right, now put your nose cone in and then invert the rocket and just give it a, a shake here. And if the nose cone's trying to come out on its own here, you may need to add a little piece of masking tape on that. Okay, mine could use just a little. And you don't necessarily need to use a whole piece of masking tape all the way around. Start off with a, a third to half of a circumference and see if that is going to be enough. Okay, so now, if I give it a shake, that's not coming loose, but I can still pull it off relatively easily, which means that the ejection charge should be able to blow it out fairly easily. Okay, and then the last thing we have are the decals. Now you don't need to add the decals if you don't want to. The rocket will fly just fine without decals nor do you necessarily have to put them on in the same places that they show here. Okay, This is your rocket, build it the way you want to. At this point it's structurally sound and the decoration is completely optional. All right. um, but If you do want to use these, uh, you can cut these out either using a hobby knife or scissors. And I'm going to use a combination of both here. So I'm going to take a nice straight edged ruler here and cut just inside the dotted lines. For the shorter cuts here, I can just use a pair of scissors. Okay, now these are meant to wrap around the body tube here. Um, all right, now with the cuts on the dotted lines like I made, they're not quite meeting in the middle there. So what I'm going to do is use this one down on the bottom. And I'm going to put it down here, and so the, the little area where they're not meeting, I'm going to put that in line with the launch lug there, because that way it won't be noticeable on the launch pad. And I'll try the, the other one without cutting the dotted line, but we may still see the dotted line by doing that. Okay, so here, decide which way you want to orient it, and then I'm just going to use the edge of the body tube as a guide. I want that up here a little bit more. Again, so that it's going to be hidden on the by the launch rod when it's on the pad. All right, and just keep some tension on it now and wrap that around. Right, it comes pretty close, but not quite. Okay, now be careful on these. Sometimes the, if you're repositioning these, it'll do like that. Okay, so it just peeled up some of the finish. Uh, fortunately, it'll still hide it when it comes around here. Okay, so I'm going to leave that about there. Okay, so I'm going to try this again with the other one here. case I'm going to go ahead and cut it right at the edge of the stripes instead of inside the dotted line there. Okay now I'm still going to apply this um, starting at the the launch lug part here. That way if it does look weird it'll be mostly hidden. Right, and for 
this one, I'm going to put it this way. Right. But once again, I'm going to use my body tube edge as a guide. And just keep tension on this as I wrap it around. Okay, and then we'll try and overlap. Not quite perfect, but pretty close there. And make sure it's not going to stick the nose cone on. And then go ahead and wipe out any bubbles that are on there. Okay, so if it's sitting on the launch pad like this, you won't see any problems with it. Alright, and then the uh, Astra ones, I'm going to put on what I could call the sides here. So they're going to be the ones that are 90 degrees off of the launch lug. And these I will cut out with scissors. Which way you want to orient it. And now I'm just going to use the edge of the body tube as a guide. by the launch rod when it's on the pad. Right, just keep some tension on it now. You know. Alright, just peel this off again. Okay, I'm going to try and center it on the body tube. Here I'm just going to let it touch down really lightly so I'm not sticking it permanently yet. And using that and to see how straight I am. Pretty darn close. I think we'll go with that. So now I'll just press it down in the middle and then work to the outsides. Okay, and I'll just flip this over. Oh, I did it on the front side. Okay, so that's still fine. Um, I wanted it on this side, but I ended up putting it here. And so for the sake of uniformity, I'm going to skip the second one. You don't need to. Um, I could put it on the launch lug side. and uh, But the, the only reason I'm not is because the, the launch rod may start wearing into it. And like I said, since you're not going to see this side from the launch pad, uh, I don't need to worry about decorating it so much. So I'm going to call this done. Um, this went together in about half an hour plus glue dry time. And so this is something you can probably put together in about an hour. Uh, give it an extra half hour for all the glue to dry and it's ready to launch after that. So I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great launch and a safe recovery. And please stay tuned for more of my videos. Mm -hmm.